What's going on everyone? My name is Talon Sai, and you are watching Sunday Gun Day. I hope you're all having a great Sunday so far. And today I'm bringing you guys a sort of impromptu style video. I wasn't really planning on filming this, but I figured, hey, I have my choice for a home defense AR-15 up here, so might as well bring you guys a video on it. Now, some of this might look familiar to you. I did do a video on the base gun that this thing was built off of, and then I also did a video on the can that I'm running on here right now. But in both of those videos, I said that I was going to bring you guys a dedicated video on my choice for a home defense setup and you're looking at it right now. If you wanna check out the videos of the base pistol or the suppressors that I'm going to be running in this video, you can check out the links in the description down below. And for this video, I'm basically going to just give you guys a rundown of the modifications that I did to this thing to make it fit for home defense to my liking. I'll roll in some B-roll and hopefully I can remember everything that I've done to this pistol so far. So for starters, the base pistol that I'm working with here is a BCM Recce 11. It is an 11 and a half inch pistol chambered in 5.56. BCM, in my opinion, makes some of the best AR-15s out on the market right now and the fit and finish of this thing, all of the features that it offered right out of the box, I basically fell in love with it and I shoot it really well. Now, as far as modifications go, we'll start from the back here with the SBA-3. If you've ever shot an SBA-3, you will know that it tends to bunch up a little bit in the rear here and it gets kind of wonky. So what I did was throw a split fix on there from my friends at the Wiseman Company. Of course, I got it in black multicam to match my black multicam sling from Lunar Concepts. And what this does is basically replace the Velcro strap that is on the brace initially and it sort of puts a little piece of fabric in the back here, keeping this thing nice and rigid and making sure it does not fold in on itself. I'm also running the Lunar Concept Sling in a two-point configuration with the hardware that was provided by BCM and that stuff comes with this pistol. Moving forward a little bit, I really didn't do a whole lot. On top, you will notice that I have some MBUS flip-up sights and those were on in the initial review. I'm still running the BCM Gunfighter charging handle and while it is not ambidextrous, it is low profile and it functions great, so I really didn't see a reason to change that out. I was really sticking with function over form when it came to this build, so I really didn't put anything Gucci on here. Everything that I did add is super functional and it serves a purpose. Just like the Radiant Talon Selector on here, I'm running this thing at a 90 degree rather than a 45 because that is sort of what I'm used to. I do like the short throw of the 45 degree selects. However, I prefer the 90 because it lets me know that that thing is on safe or ready to fire. I'm also running the Geisley Super Dynamic Combat Trigger Flat Face. I put these triggers in everything and you guys have seen these on the channel a million times before. Dust cover is the same, bolt carrier inside is the same, still running the stock BCM bolt carrier group. I have not cleaned this thing since I've owned it. And then moving forward to the fairly slim M-Lock handguard, I'm running some Magpul Grippy Johns on here. I forget what the actual name for these are, but they are very aggressive. Might not look super aggressive on video, but I'm telling you these things grip your hands like nothing else. On the bottom, I have a hand stop. That way I know where to index my hand properly because I want it in the same place every time because on top I'm running a Surefire pressure switch and that thing is wired up to the Surefire Scout light. I'm also running one of their new mounts which is super low profile. We were actually running these at the Surefire event this past summer, the Battle of the Bills. At the time we weren't allowed to show you guys this which is why I never mentioned it. However, I love this setup and this is probably my favorite configuration as far as a weapon light goes. I have this light pushed out pretty far to fall almost directly in line with the Surefire War Comp which I put on here. And the reason I'm running that is of course so I can suppress it with my Mini 2 right here. I also have an RC2 and today we're going to be doing a little bit more testing with these cans, a little bit more than I did in the video, the dedicated video on these cans. One last thing that I'm running on top is an Aimpoint Micro T2, which is bomb proof. Also, I have that thing mounted up to a ScalarWorks Leap Mount. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite combos. I love the stuff that ScalarWorks put out, and of course, I love everything that Aimpoint's doing. The setup right here comes with a hefty price tag. However, if you're going for best of the best, I think that this is definitely worth it. So that is pretty much it in a nutshell. This is my idea of the perfect home defense setup. This is obviously going to vary person to person, and there's gonna be a lot of people in the comment section who don't agree with some of the things that I did on here, but it's going to be hard to argue that this thing is put together with some of the best quality parts out there right now. 
So the first thing I wanna do today is test out some new ammo that I got with these suppressors. I'm not exactly sure if I want to keep the Mini 2 on here or if I want to run the longer RC2. So let me show you guys what I actually brought to shoot today. So here is the ammo that I wanna test out today. This is coming from Atomic Ammunition. It is 5.56 Tactical Cycling Subsonic 5.56. So this is low recoil, reduced noise, and it is 112 grain. It's only coming out at 1050 FPS. However, I wanna test this stuff to see first how it's going to sound with the different suppressors on here. And then also ballistically, I wanna see if that point of aim, point of impact is going to change depending on how far I'm out. In a home defense situation, typically you're going to be very close quarters. So if you're running something like this, I don't think it will matter too much, but I also need to see if it will actually cycle through this gun. If I need to make any modifications like change out the buffer weight, maybe put an adjustable gas block, probably won't end up doing that. But yeah, let's see how this stuff does. All right, here we have a full 30 rounds of 112 green 5.56. Gonna load this thing up. Starting with the Surefire Mini 2, I'm gonna be putting these into the dirt to first see if they are hearing safe. And then I will put it on some steel to see if I can actually get some hits. I'm back here from about 30 yards. I'm gonna crank my ears all the way up to start. Super loud. Let's see how it sounds. Definitely low recoil, that's for sure. Another thing I wanna take note of is the ejection pattern on these. I believe that looked okay. Let's try it again, no ears. Ejection pattern looks good. I think it's right on the cusp of being hearing safe, but I'm actually okay with that. Now let's uh, shoot some targets here to see where my zero is at. I mean, this thing was dialed in for about 50 yards before, and I don't think that it really changed at all when I'm this close. Now, before I get this thing too hot, what I want to do is throw my other suppressor on here. Of course, make sure this thing is clear. Hopefully, this thing is not too hot yet. Thank you, quick detach. It's cold out here, and this is warm. Woo. Now, I will throw on the longer RC2. Make sure that thing is nice and tight on there. I'm also gonna pick up that round that I pulled out of the chamber there because this ammo is expensive. Now this is gonna be a little bit more gassy, I believe, and this should definitely be hearing safe. So we'll start again into the dirt. I mean, that ejection pattern looks pretty perfect and that's what you get when you put a quality build together like this. BCM has their gases dialed in almost perfectly. When you couple it with a Surefire suppressor, some of the best out there, you really don't have to do a whole lot of tuning. And as you guys see here, I'm running this thing pretty unconventionally with a suppressor with 112 grain ammo, and it seems to be functioning fine. Point of aim, point of impact. I mean, it's accurate, it's quiet, and I could definitely run this thing inside if I wanted to. It's gonna be much louder indoors, obviously, because you're gonna have the sound bouncing off of everything. But man, as long as this thing stays reliable, I am very happy with it. It's like shooting a 22. It's so low recoil now, it's crazy. All right, so I just switched back to the Mini 2, and I think I'm going to keep running it in this configuration just because of how short this thing can actually get while still remaining hearing safe. You definitely don't wanna shoot anything like 55 grain through a suppressor like this. I've done it, it's loud, you're gonna want ears, especially indoors. But now I'm going to keep shooting this thing into dirt at varying distances from the camera. A lot of this audio is sort of hard to pick up, but maybe you guys will get a better idea of what this thing sounds like.
injection is still looking great. This thing locks back and functions just as I would expect. I probably wouldn't want to shoot this thing indoors with the Mini 2 on there. The RC2 is definitely gonna do a better job at suppressing not only the sound, but the blast and the little bit of fire that might be coming out of there. But I'm okay with that trade-off because of the little bit of length that it saves me on here. Now I got one more mag for you guys, just 100 rounds of this stuff today because it's expensive, like I said. I picked this ammo up from Ventura Munitions out in Las Vegas. However, you might be able to find it online in different areas. I don't know what it's currently going for, but I can tell you that it's not cheap. So there you guys have it. Accurate, reliable, maneuverable, made with some of the best parts out there. I'm really happy with how this thing is performing right now. And that is why I built this thing to be my ideal setup for the best home defense AR-15. In the future, I may have to go a little bit more in depth on some of the other accessories like the Surefire Scout Light. I could definitely bring you guys a full video on that, as well as the Aimpoint T2. This was actually sent to me from my friends at Shooting Surplus, so thank you guys very much for not only supporting the channel, but allowing me to put out information on some kick-ass products like you see right here. So I guess that's gonna be all for today. If you guys are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.